Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep My name is Jason Newland And my stomach is rumbling Yay! Which is nice Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes now I'm thinking because I'm thinking of starting a new podcast called a noisy little ferret running around in the background just as I press record don't know what he's up to uh. anyway I'm going to read a book so none of my silly nonsense today none of my silly jokes or none of my you know silly puns or life experiences or made up stories any of that stuff I'm going to read from one of the best uh, writers in history I say one of the best I mean there's lots isn't there there's hundreds and thousands maybe but uh, Leo Tolstoy now that might sound a bit scary (laughs) at first when I say that Um, because I know a lot of people may associate Leo, Mr. Leo, with War and Peace. Well, this is not that book. This is Childhood, Boyhood and Youth. So I've got it in my hands right now. I'm rubbing it, rubbing the front. It's a... Uh, it's a little bit damaged. It's a it's a new book, but it's got um. It's really weird because on the front there's a, like a little boy, a painting. Uh, well, a little boy, a little girl, or someone, looking out to the sea, but where their ear is, there's like little dents, like there really wasn't a real ear there at some point. I'm sure there wasn't. So this is translated by Dora O'Brien. Oops. So what I thought I would do, because I had a uh, a lot of positive feedback from the last time I read from a book, and uh, I've got no idea what book that was. But what I need to do, I have to be careful about which books I use due to copyright law and this book was published in 1852 well actually um, childhood was boyhood because it's three books so I'll read childhood first boyhood was first published in 1854 and Youth was first published in 1857. So, um, I think, um, I imagine it's been translated by lots of different people, but the actual book itself is out of copyright. So, um, I'm just going to read this book to you. It's... God, do you hear him? He's just running around. He's just run to the door. Like, you know, the door of the room, Andre, this is... He's just laid down flat. And he's staring at me. He's in fact, he's laid down on his, his side. And he's just staring at me. And 
I can't even see his face properly because I've got my reading glasses on. I can see his face and I can see he's got a face. It's not like I'm looking at him like, oh my God, he's turned into a boiled egg. No, he's, he's still there. A little furry, <laughs> little furry face. I gave him a little cuddle earlier. Um, oh, he's so beautiful. Sometimes. So this book, it's a very big, 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 big book. But there's a lot of notes at the end, which I'm not going to read because although admittedly it would be boring, it would be too boring for me. I've got to be honest with you, I'd, I'd find it, you know, I could read, I could read the notes, but for me, it's not about the book being boring because, you know, it's about me just reading it in a boring way, I guess. And hopefully Andre will shut up in a minute. So I'm sitting here at my desk, on my table. I inherit, I was talking to my friend. Um, about inheritance which is a weird kind of subject and he was you know, rude, I won't say what he said but I'll, I'll tell you what I said I said that I've not really ever inherited anything I mean partly because no one likes me <laughs> no it's a lot of my relatives live to be very, very old. You know, all my uncles and aunts are still alive and they're all pretty much, I guess in their seventies now, and they're pretty much, my oldest uncle's in his, he's over 80. Um, my dad's 74, I think, 75. So they all kind of live to be, you know, my nan was 90, I think she was 94, 95 when she passed away. My granddad was 80. Um, that's my dad's side of the family. I don't know my mum's side. So it's, you know, my brothers are still alive, you know, so it's all kind of. Um, I haven't inherited anything, which for me, the downside of that is, you know. I was going to say inheritance tax, inheritance tax, but no. The I want, like with my dad, you know, I don't want to inherit money from him when he's gone. I want him to be alive to watch me wasting his money. That's why, you know, I want him to see what I'm spending the money on. Not that there's going to be much money, because it's. Probably give it all to me, niece. God, that was bitter, wasn't it? Oh. But we were talking about it, and I remembered that I had did get an inheritance, and it was my nan's sister when she passed away, and she was in her, I think she's about eighty nine. She was eighty nine years old, and this was back in two thousand and eight, I think. When she passed away, they found something like 50 grand underneath the bed. You know, and um, which was a bit of a shock for everyone. And uh, I'm not even sure she might have forgotten it was there. So I inherited, I didn't, it wasn't like a, a will or anything. But I got fifty, got five hundred pound. My dad gave me five hundred pounds, so I'm guessing he must have inherited a, a few grand, and kind of shared it out. But you know, I wasn't in the will. Like, please give my great nephew five hundred pound. My great nephew that I never see ever. I did see it. I did not very often. 
but uh, my nan used to, they used to take turns phoning each other once a week and uh, my nan said it's usually like a Sunday evening I think it was and my nan said that they'd be on the phone for nearly two hours and her sister would just talk and talk and talk and talk so I think I might have inherited that ability to just talk and talk and talk and talk and she was also kind of a bit I use the word reclusive but probably a bit reclusive um, I don't mean that in a, in a bad way just she, she I think enjoyed her own company and was quite happy to to be on her own because being alone doesn't mean being lonely necessarily for some people it is I know but for me it isn't and plus I got Andre but even if I didn't have him I'd still have still be alright mind you I can't imagine life without him now a little weird furry poo machine that he is so that had, <laughs> that had nothing to do with the book See, even when I try to be all sensible and professional, yes, because it's very professional, isn't it, reading a book that someone else has written? Oh, that's how professional. Um, so what I thought is I'd read this. It's a long, long book. I'm clearly not going to be able to read it all in one go. I'm probably not even going to be able to read a... Oh, maybe. Looks like some of the chapters are quite short. So maybe I can read, uh, like, a chapter at a time or a few chapters. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I'm not sure the best route... Um, Because it seems a little bit how the word the word is, but non continuous or you know, if I just there's three hundred and sixteen pages and that's between the three books. The first book is the first book goes up to page ninety five from page five. So that is 90 pages, isn't it? And that'll probably take me to the end of the year to do that. The thing is, the reason I'm reading this book is not really just for you. The boring part is for you, me being... Um, I don't know how to talk interestingly really I'm just just the way I talk but I'm, I'm actually going to be interested in the book and it's time that for me because I've always been a not for quite a while but I used to be a really avid reader and a collector of books not just I mean, in recent years, the last 20 years has been much more therapy based and psychology, philosophy, um, Buddhism, hypnosis, NLP, uh, you know, psychotherapy, you know, that kind of stuff. But I've kind of, I miss the old days a little bit, you know, the early 90s when I used to. I used to read a lot of Beat Generation books, uh, Allen Ginsberg, um, William Burroughs, as well as all the other like big names at the time. I used to get a magazine which used to kind of talk about the writers, a lot of which were still alive, you know, they'd, they'd been writing in the 40s, 50s and 60s. And Kerouac, of course. 
and then I kind of got into some of the more alternative stuff such as uh, Charles Bukowski and I always wanted to be a writer I never have been a writer um, but it was something that I always wanted to do from a very very small boy um, yeah I remember trying to write books trying to write stories uh, and sometimes just sitting and looking at the blank page because I could write about stuff that just came into my mind but I wasn't able to control my mind to write about stuff that I wanted to write about if that makes sense I couldn't um, you know I'd sit down and I had this little pull out desk part of the furniture of that I had in my bedroom and I remember I was sitting upstairs on the top of the top of the house um, so basically you go in the front door if you go straight up the stairs turn right the bathroom is just you go past the bathroom and the toilet there's a bathroom with a toilet plus a toilet there's also a toilet downstairs as well it was, there's quite a few of us living there so we had to have plenty of places to do wee wee's so you turn right, around the banister, walk down, go past three rooms, and then turn right again up the stairs. And my brother's bedroom was ahead, so walk around, around that, sort of pass that up the steps, turn right again. And then my other brother's bedroom was straight ahead, but mine was on the left. My oldest brother used to have the, the one at the left, the one that I had. Uh, but then he moved into the bigger room, which used to be our like playroom. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think yeah, I think that was that was removed because my little brother needed a bigger room. Um, even though we had a spare room, but that had to be spare, just left empty in case of visitors and stuff. That was the having a spare room was more important than having a, a place where we could play pool and table tennis. Probably time to let it go, really, isn't it? It's about 35 years ago. Oh, I've let it go now. Oh, I feel so much lighter. Mm. And in my bedroom, you go in, on the right hand side, I had a. Uh, I think I had two sets of shelves ones that were just on brackets on the wall and I used to put too many books on them and they sometimes the whole thing would just fall on the floor they'd fall over or the the the, the wood or the shelf because it wasn't attached it wasn't actually attached to the bracket it was just like laying on top of the bracket should have been attached to the bracket because then it would have stayed up but anyway I put too many books on it it kept falling down I also had on the left hand side as you go in there was this it's like a wardrobe um, yeah so it's a kind of quite a big unit the wardrobe was on the right so that was a door big you know open up put stuff hanging stuff up um, and the next part of the of the I don't know what, contraption what do you want to call it there was a what was it I think it was like a shelf at the top quite deep so I could put stuff in there and then there was a pull down unit like a pull down desk it's basically a door that pulled down and that would be the desk and you can keep stuff inside there and then underneath there was at the bottom there was I think three gaps where you could it's big enough to put albums or magazines and you know it's quite a lot of space so you could put stuff in there and I used to collect Flex bodybuilding magazine 
and a few other different magazines as well at that time because I was a bit older then I think I was like 14 13 or 14 when I started living in that room so I was there for about two years maybe three um, yeah so and what else I had a set of drawers as well somewhere and there was a bed of course and a windowsill but the windowsill looked onto a wall a brick wall there was no light in my room there was light I mean it wasn't like pitch black it, well, there was light but there was no sort of light shining in there was no sunlight or anything well I suppose there was sunlight where light comes from isn't it but does that make sense it was the wall because we was a semi-detached house so my my bedroom window faced the next house so you could if you like put your if you manoeuvred your head and your eyes correctly could kind of see a little bit onto the main road you know, the, the front of the house but that's about it um, but I could stick my head out of the window uh, so that was alright but yeah it's not it's better to have sunlight I've lived in places where there's no sunlight and where there's before I moved here I lived in a basement um Although there was windows, just didn't catch hardly any light in there at all. And so I had to have the light on a lot, like the, you know, the light bulb uh, switched on. But it also meant I needed, I had to have the curtains drawn closed, otherwise people could see me in there. So it's, you know, a bit, it's not great, but I'm not there anymore. I'm here and I've got big windows, which do let the light in during the daytime. And I've got a big light behind me now that's shining, which is good. It's one of those, not halogen, is it a halogen light? It's like really bright, like proper. My nan used to have one big old light it's not big as in like size wise you know I don't have to like try and stretch around it to get to the front door it's not that big it's just but it's bright bigness as in brightness and I've got the other light on as well but because I'm sitting at the desk at my table it's my desk and my table really I got my reading glasses on I needed to have the light on behind me otherwise the it's not bright enough in here to actually see the book I can see the book I can see it's a book you know it's not like oh my god what's that kebab doing there oh no no it's a book I know it's a book but the actual the reading the, the you know the the words it's not wasn't very bright but with these reading glasses I can't see di <laughs> I can't see distance which doesn't really matter because there's nothing in the distance but even the things for example uh, I've got a yeah it's a picture of me and my nan in a little picture frame on top of one of my bookcases it's it's not even that far away from me but I can't it's just blurry I can see it's a picture frame um, you know, it's, oh my god what's that worm doing there no it's it's a oh it's me and but I see, it's a picture of me and my nan and I know it's me and I know it's my nan so it's it's not like I don't know who it is because I already know who it is you can't unknow what you know can you you can forget things that aren't important, obviously. Um, but the... I can't see it, it's blurry. But then I take my glasses off and it's actually clearer 
even though I need glasses for distance. And then I put the other glasses on. I can see it absolutely wonderfully. What strange eyesight I have. I blame it on my dad. I can't blame everything else on him. I don't really. So, and so I've, I kind of want to read. I want to kind of read all the classics. I've read a few over the years. But I want to just read for the love of reading. But if I can kind of do two things at the same time, uh, then why not? So I get to learn something by reading, you know, a classic book and you get to be bored. And it's not the book that's boring. And that's, you know, that's what I need to... I want that to be clear that I'm not... Um, mocking the book by saying that I'm reading a boring book because I'm not it's just it's boring listening to someone read I find and yeah I, just, I fall asleep I was if I if I lay down and I listen to someone talking it doesn't matter what they're talking about I'll fall asleep and but what I thought at least with this it's good quality words that you're hearing it's not my words it's Leo Leo's words so that's it really so I when I first started this recording I said I'm thinking about doing a new podcast and I thought about doing a podcast where solely it's just me reading books however I just it seems this fits more into this so maybe I could do both I don't know but I know, I'm pretty, pretty sure that if I did a podcast just reading books, I'd just have to get on with the book and just read it. Because people would be like, oh, I want you to, you said you're going to read Leo's book, but you, you, you were talking for like five hours before you even got the first sentence out. And I know, so I don't know if I'd get away with that outside of these let me bore you to sleep recordings because those of you that listen regularly kind of know what I'm like kind of know that this is what I do and it's not it's not it's not a uh, it's not an act it's just the way I am so that's why it's why I am when I do these when I do uh, deep sleep whisper ones, I said this yesterday, I think, some of the other like insomnia sessions or the anxiety podcast, I'm a bit more sensible, mm, a little bit more, because it's focused on a particular thing. Um, because I know, and I've been told by a few people that actually not everybody listens to these let me bore you to sleep to go to sleep some people listen just for company like it's kind of like a radio show or you know just to have someone um, a voice and I suppose I kind of do the same thing because I listen to a radio station called LBC and it's a talk radio show or talk radio station and I listen every day you know various amount of times but probably a good couple of hours a day sometimes more 
and I kind of feel I've got to know the presenters. There's at least four presenters that I listen to, usually like the evening ones. There's Nick Abbott. He's got a t he's got a radio show Friday and Saturday evening from ten till one. He's he's funny and. Steve Allen has got a radio show from five and four to seven weekly, Monday to Friday, and he does some stuff at the weekend as well. So I, you know, often he's on now. I often listen to him and Adam Stadler. Is it Stadler? And Matt Matt something I forget his name. So there's a couple that I list, there's four all together that I actually listen to regularly. So I kind of feel like I got to know them, even though I don't know them. You know, they might have really smelly feet, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because on the radio, it's, you know, I don't, I don't know everything about them, but they do open up. Actually, a friend of mine today said, he was surprised when I said that I talk about my life and because I, I, I do joke and say that I make stuff up and which I do you know when I do the let me bore you to sleep sessions I make stuff up I just I tell fibs I suppose I, I lie not lie I just make up stuff I think a lot of the stuff if it's kind of obvious that it's been made up but then I do also tell the truth as well I've talked about bipolar I've talked about my mental health issues or whatever and in some ways in some ways I'm kind of a success story in some ways I'm not you know it depends how you look at it financially I'm really not a success but if you gauge success by having perhaps made a difference to uh, quite a few people over the course of quite a few years over quite a few different countries then I suppose I have been had a bit of success as long as some of the stuff I do is helpful and if it wasn't people wouldn't be listening ultimately and why can you imagine someone listening to this and like being really angry and like oh I don't like this bloke oh. well, why are you listening just stop don't do, be kind to yourself and do something different you know it's really important it's, it doesn't matter you know what's more important is that you you look after yourself and you do what you need to do and you enjoy the things that you enjoy and do more of that. So whatever it is, whether it's playing cards, going fishing, um, astronomy, wh wh you know, whatever it is that you love doing, I really do advise you do more of that. You know, as long as it's not hurting you or anyone else, have some fun, especially well, of any age, but take it from a <laughs> an older man. I can't believe I'm an older man now. I'm 49 next month. 49. I know I don't sound it, but I am. I never sounded, never sounded my age. Honestly, when I was probably in my 30s, I probably sounded like I was in my early 20s, maybe late teens even. What was I like? You know, and when I was in my late teens, or not late teens, but I was in my teens, I sounded like a child, pretty much. And then when I was a small child, I was basically just going, yeah, gang, oh, You know, it was, you know, the highest, highest pitched voice ever. I'm sure I was like the la the last child in my school to have their voice break. 
I was in the fifth year, I think, when my voice, I think my, I think there was people in at 11 that were, voices were breaking, and mine didn't break till I was probably 14. I used to come down, so every time I come down in the morning, and I didn't speak yet, but I could feel my voice, I could feel my throat, and because I hadn't spoken yet, I was a little bit croaky, and I'd wake up, and I'd be like, morning, and I thought, yes, at last. So I'd say, morning, hey, was everyone? Oh, God damn. I was like, oh. Morning. It was just it used to just change, but eventually it happened. But it didn't happen. I think it like gradually happened. I had one of those voices that would just gradually change. It didn't just drop. You know, it wasn't just like there you go. Now you're a man. It was a gradual, gradual process. And I've never had a deep voice. Just never had a. Just it's just it's just a voice, isn't it? But it's never been. Uh, some people put a fake deep voice on, which I find quite funny, because you know, it's, and they get used to doing it, and they kind of become part of them. But I don't know why. I really like. You can see they're kind of straining to make their voice deep. I don't understand that. Oh, hello, everybody. Ooh. So, um, we've all got different voices, though, haven't we? Which is good because imagine phoning someone up. I was going to say they'd have no idea who they were, but. Of course, mobile phones has the name of the person on there, so that ruins that one. Or, if you answer the phone, you're blindfolded, and you decided, and then you wouldn't know who it was, would you? You may think, who would blindfold themselves? Well, I have. I did. I, I had this little meditation thing I did. And it was back in uh, 1998, I think it was. And I decided, you know what? I think it might have been influenced by something I read. Wonder he's decided to come out and stretch himself out. Anyway, what I decided to do is I wanted to get in touch with my sense of taste. Excuse the background sounds, it's Andre. He's laying on some newspaper and he's yawning and he's staring at me. I don't know quite what he wants. Now he's, you don't want to know what he's doing now. Don't. Don't, don't be kissing me after you've done that. And uh, so what I decided to do is I had I cooked myself some dinner. There was no one else in the house, which was good. Oh shit, shut up. There was no one else in the house. And it was, I don't know, probably about five, six o'clock in the evening. So I did something that I hadn't done for a while because I cooked some chips, like frozen chips and some fish fingers at the same time in a deep fat fryer. I say deep fat fryer's oil. And most of my life I've not fried anything. Most of my life I've cooked it's either been in the oven or under the grill. Frying them together, oh, so much better. It came out perfect, but you know, just going through a little patch of eating fried food. So what I thought I would do is I'd cook the food because 
when it comes to things like deep fat fryers, blindfolds aren't a good idea. So I cooked the food first, then I put the blindfold on. Then I thought, how am I gonna get the plate to the table? Um, but I managed to do it, and I couldn't see anything through it. I could, you know, just, I couldn't see what I was doing. So, but I managed to get to the table. I sat down. I probably might should have just taken the blindfold off and then sat down, but it's fine. You know, I mean, I carried it so I could see where I was going, but I also kind of wanted to get in touch a little bit with the experience of. Um, and very, very minimal, obviously, would be the experience that I got in touch with, but just the experience of um, doing stuff in the house without sight. So I did that in the kitchen. I thought, oh, no, I'll start off with something easy like frying food. No. So I sat down at the table. So I had found chips and fish fingers and beans I don't know if I had beans and they were Heinz beans if I did have them because I wouldn't eat anything else really and I've tried every type of beans um, but I don't know if I had beans but I imagine I did I'm pretty certain I would have had and also some um, tomato ketchup as well and possibly a few slices of bread and very likely a cup of tea as well but not not too hot it has to be the right temperature so I can drink it whilst I eat by that I don't mean putting food in my mouth and then putting some tea in my mouth and squishing it all around I mean like in intervals you know it's it's. Uh, I've always been always found it a company's food liquid you know it's I like just, just like to have a drink when I'm eating it's always always been the same I say that, I mean, I don't know. I suppose, I mean, it makes sense because you think the first food we had was just liquid, wasn't it? Whether it was, um, you know, from the source or if it was uh, just like some kind of milk substitute, protein, you know, whatever that babies have, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I tell you what, I used to love Farley's rusks. And you know the reason I love them? Because my nan used to give me Farley's rusks as a child. Not as a small child, but as, you know, from the age of seven, pretty much. Why did she have Farley's rusks in the kitchen cupboard? That's what I don't understand. But she bought them, and she gave them to us, and we loved them. I say we, I mean, probably me and my brothers and stuff. I know I did anyway. I can only really talk for myself, but um, I don't remember them kind of making a fuss and going, Ooh, I don't want any Farley's rusks. What did you keep doing that for? Oh, I don't remember that conversation. I'd love it if Andre just be quiet for a bit. He's running around from one part of the room to the next. You'd probably love it if I'd get on and start reading this book, wouldn't you? <laughs> probably. Probably. But I had these fish fingers. <sighs> I had these fish fingers and these chips and these beans and a cup of tea at the right temperature. I, I left the fish fingers and the, the chips to cool down a bit because I don't like food being too hot in my mouth. 
because I find that just it's uncomfortable and it burns a bit burny you know I just ugh, I don't enjoy it as much but at the same time I don't want to eat cooked food that's cold this is kind of a happy medium of course it has to be piping hot before you put it onto the plate you know for health and safety reasons I mean you don't cook something just to the temperature that you want to eat it at it has to be hot and you know piping hot I never understood the word piping because I think of piping I think of cake decorating I think of Andre scratching his thing just then sorry about that He's hassly, he's now staring at me. He's, he's walked under the table. He's just staring at me. I'm going to pick him up because I think he he wants my attention. Hello. Hello, mate. Are you okay? licking my hand what's going on with you me eh? you've got everything you need you've got your food you're not touching your food you've got your water you've got your dry food as well you've got lots of toys oh you know what I did I don't know if I told you I got a toddler bath like a like a baby bath which you well, actually in that like a you could bathe her like a like a very small child in that's what it's for but I bought it for two pound ninety nine from Aldi got a few funny looks on the bus coming back but uh, I wasn't wearing shoes so that might be it and I filled it with dirt thinking that Andre would love it because he'd be able to do some digging and stuff but he doesn't seem that interested in it for some reason so I don't know I don't know what's going on with him I need to cut his fingernails because they're getting a bit long So what happens is fingernails, if they get too long, they curl a little bit at the end. And then he sometimes gets things stuck in there. At the moment he's got, I don't know what it is, some kind of fabric. That was him. Got some fabric stuck in one of his nails. But the nail's not very long, so it's just, it's just him. And it might have been him like scratching at the carpet and stuff like that. So I'll I'll get that I'll get that off of him. You should see him now. He's actually laying on my laptop. My laptop's closed. He's laying on the laptop, which he never does. Also laying on top of the book that I haven't read. And he's in my arms and I'm kinda of just holding him. And he's really relaxed. He's just why are you so relaxed, Andre? Whoops. I say that and then he starts wiggling. What are you wiggling for? What are you wiggling for? You do a little funny sneeze for everyone to hear. Say, at you, at you, at you. Do you love your daddy? Do you love your daddy the mostest in the whole world? Yes. <laughs> He's giving me kisses. Mm. Okay, I'll let you go. Behave yourself. He's just gone and run on the carpet and well, no, onto the paper and done a wee. So that's why he was trying to get out of my arms because he needed to go and, you know, now he's run off somewhere else. 
see, even when I try, I attempt to do something really serious. Andre, sorry about that, it's Andre again, he's just... doing now. You're going to hear what he's doing if you listen, <laughs> if you're still awake. Um, uh, wow, that's not what I bought you that teddy bear for. Oh well. So, in the background, you've got the sweet sounds of Andre, and he will be making some noise or some sounds. So, just so annoying. I just want him to be quiet. So I had these, this blindfold on purposely so that I could eat chips and the fish and chip, uh, fish, fish fingers and chips. I sometimes wonder if the neighbour downstairs can hear, hear his little footsteps running around. Now he's eating his dinner, so you probably hear that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had these fish fingers and uh, chips. And taking the visual side out, I could have just closed my eyes, couldn't I? To be fair, I didn't. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I've had eyelids for years, you know, but I just forgot I had them. Yeah. Anyway, I had the blindfold on. I say blindfold, I think it was a tea towel. And I believe that my senses, my taste, and my smell increased. And even the holding of the knife and fork the, the physical sensation of holding those uh, metal objects seemed to magnify a little bit so it's quite that's quite a nice experience I was a little bit worried that someone might walk in because it's like, oh, how do I explain this? But, you know, admittedly, I didn't have, to, it was an experiment, but I didn't have to do it naked. But, you know, nevertheless, I, I wanted to kind of get in touch with the different senses without the distraction, the distraction rather, of Andre eating the distraction of the other senses and because the visual sense can be I suppose a bit overloaded sometimes because a lot you know even just in this room I'm quite um, I think I'm quite minimalist but there's you know, if I described this room and every item in it, it would, you know, there's a fair bit of stuff in there. I've actually manoeuvred the room around a little bit because I've got a punch bag now. So I've got a bracket on the wall with a punch bag. And my friend helped me to put, well, he put it up actually, I, I just watched. So I've had to move the chair from against the wall 
I'll put my little table on the right hand side of my chair instead of the left. I had to move the TV away from the wall and I put the carpet cleaner next to the wall. So what's weird and the table's now exactly where it was before. But for some reason, now that the chair's not against the wall, it seems to be a bit more comfortable because it seems to stretch stretch easier for some reason. It's Again, he's, he doesn't have to do that, he's just showing off. Can you hear him? He's now climbing through a tunnel. Now he's run to the front door, so I don't know. It suddenly seems to be full of energy, which is the opposite to what I want. Because I'm going to be going to bed soon. And I prefer to go to bed when he's asleep, because then I don't disturb him. And instead of putting him into his cage in the storage room, I've started, I used to have, this, I used to have the cage in here, but it makes so much noise I could never make a recording. I could make recordings, but it was noisy, so it was just, if he's in a cage, he, trust me, if he wants to get out of the cage, he'll let me know. So by giving him free, by giving him free reign to just run around and do what he wants, I'd hoping that he'd be just a bit more considerate. <laughs> Which has gone into his bag now, so he's probably going to go to sleep. But so what I do now is I close the bedroom, I close the, the living room door, so he stays in the living room. But he's got all his toys in there. He's got his water, food, loads of stuff to play with and run around. And you know, admittedly, I'd rather have the whole flat to do that in, but I can't give that to him because a couple of nights ago I let him have the whole flat and just closed my bedroom door and it was going really well and then he started scratching at the bedroom door but not just a little bit he just did not give up so I had to put him into the living room and close the door otherwise I'd love for him just to have the full reign of you know the kitchen, bathroom, hallway and the living room he loves that, he loves running around at different, you know, different rooms and stuff. I say love, I don't know if that's how he feels about it. It might be really tedious for him. It's like, oh, I'm in the bathroom again. Wonderful. Nothing's changed, it still looks the same. So it might be a little bit, you know, like that for him. But, you know, he seems to be quite happy doing it. But in reality, other than the living room, his favourite room is the bedroom. That's where he does a lot of his um, activities, unfortunately. He's, uh, and he loves sleeping on the bed, or in the bed, or inside the... <laughs> he'd sleep inside the mattress if he could get inside there. But he, he loves the bed because it's comfortable. He likes to wrap, um, not wrap as in, you know, Dr. Dre, but he likes to, I wonder if he's a real doctor. But he's, isn't it illegal to pretend to be a doctor? He um, used to, he likes to get into the quilt sometimes actually inside the quilt or just wrap himself wrap the quilt around him he loves the bed the thing is if I'm asleep in bed he, he climbs up on it and he just hassles me because he wants me to be awake when he's awake and he wants me to go away when he wants to sleep 
and he climbs on me and he just pokes me in the face and licks my face and nibbles on my face or starts like biting my toes and you know like he will literally just lick my eyelids and start nibbling on my eyebrows because he wants me to be awake and if I don't get up he then starts banging doors I go into the kitchen and he'll keep banging the kitchen um, cupboard the, the one he can reach and he just lays on his back and he just pushes the door open and lets it, lets it slam and he'll continuously do that until I get out of bed very devious very devious right so where should we start so this is chapter one Carl Ivanich the tutor on 12th August 18 then it's blank blank so I don't know what year exactly three days after my 10th birthday when I had received such wonderful presents Carl Ivanich woke me up at 7 o'clock in the morning by swatting a fly right above my head with a, swy, a fly swatter made of sugar paper on a stick that's all I've got time for because it's now going to 62 minutes so um, I'll, re <laughs> I'll read you the next paragraph tomorrow I'll try and read a, I'll try and just do it without talking but it's got to be possible Anyway, thank you for listening, and uh, hopefully this was boring enough. bye zee bye And please remember to subscribe, if you haven't already, to this podcast.